Hey friends, happy Wednesday to all of you and thanks for joining me for a little bit of drawing. I hope you all had a nice weekend and a nice week leading up to today. It's time for us to do something a little bit creative and relaxing so we can all be in a good mood heading into the rest of the week, right? We have another one of these shows tomorrow at the same time. Hope you'll join me for that. And as I mentioned last week, my Friday show is no longer around for the draw along. It's been replaced with a very interesting show called a masterclass. And in this show, I'm actually talking about much more advanced uh, concepts and ideas having to do with illustration specifically. The last one I did last week was about composition, and I will continue that again this week with some more advanced uh, ideas having to do with composition, such as harmonic armatures. Isn't it fun to say that? Harmonic armatures. What a cool phrase. Anyway, well, you know, we're all stuck at home. And that's the safe thing to do, and we need entertainment. And so one of the great things that I've noticed is that our library has made it possible for us to check out books remotely. We can read them on any tablet, on any computer, and it's really a wonderful thing that we can still check out the books that we love to read. Uh, our kids have been enjoying that very much. I've been enjoying it, of course, very much as well. Um, but I heard a story the other day about a burglar who almost broke into the library, but then he chose not to steal a book. Do you know why? Because he was afraid he'd get a long sentence. Okie dokie. Well, why don't we do a little bit of drawing together now? So if you're ready to go, you're going to have to grab yourselves a pencil, a pen, a marker, or a crayon. Or, like I always say, you can grab something completely different. Just grab a little piece of wood off the side of your house. You know, that siding, you don't need it. Just destroy your own home for the sake of drawing. Okay, grab that wood and dip it in some tar. And then with that uh, wood and that tar, just drag it all over your uh, parents' favorite carpet to do the drawing today. And I'm sure they won't mind one bit. Now for the draw along, which is what we're gonna do it right now, this is the you draw it portion. You're going to need to be able to do three things, okay? And I'll show you what those are. A straight line, simple enough. A zigzag, or a curvilinear line. Isn't that lovely? Now while you're thinking about all that, I want to say hello to my friends in the chat because this is a live show, so I like to see who's here. Alrighty, hi Sam, hi Rob, oh Robzilla, Hugo, nice to see you, Ariana, very nice, very nice, Lana, nice to see you, Clever, thank you for joining us again, and Michelle, hey Jay, glad you're here again, I'm so glad you're all here folks, and um, melt those crayons kids, says Clever. Sure, yes, you know what? Just do whatever you like. Whatever makes you feel, you know, creative. All right, let's get going. So today's drawing, we are going to, uh, by the way, I've changed the color. You notice this, that for the draw alongs, I'm gonna use this nice red color. I just thought it'd be fun to separate the sections of the show into three different colors, the red, the green, and the blue. Why not? And when we're done with the draw along, we're gonna do a nice favorite books uh, segment where I will show you one of my favorite books from that lovely bookshelf behind me. I get questions about that bookshelf sometimes and I like to be able to show you what's on that bookshelf because it's my favorites. So if you're ready to go, I'm gonna draw and you can follow along with me. And here we go. We're gonna start with a vertical line. Watch this. It's gonna go straight down like that. You may be asking yourself, well, how long should that line be on my piece of paper that I'm drawing with if you're drawing on a piece of paper? Well. I would say you can make it about an inch and a half to two inches long, somewhere in that vicinity, maybe a little smaller. You don't want to draw too small. That makes it hard to really control what you're doing, but you know, inch and a half, something like that. For all of you who don't use inches, and since the United States is pretty much the only country still dealing with that, I would say make it about uh, five centimeters at the most, okay? Four is probably better. Alrighty then. We're gonna do a shallow V on top of this. Now watch, I'm going to head out in this direction, check it out, diagonal, about that long, all right? And as we often do, we'll just mirror that 
on the other side. So here it comes. I'm going to just go this way, mirror what I did there, head out to about there. Does it have to be perfect? No, never has to be perfect. These drawings are simple enough and the shapes are simple enough and the length of the lines and all this. If, if you make something slightly shorter, slightly longer, it's not going to make a difference. Your drawing is still going to turn out just fine, don't you worry. All right, we're going to look at what we've just done there. And we're actually going to come down to the bottom of this first line we drew and then do the same thing as what we did at the top. So check this out. I'm going to move out this way. And you see what I'm doing? I am following this same angle down here. Same length of the line and the same angle. We're going to flip it over on this side and do the same thing. Do, 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 like so. All right. Everybody with me so far? Okay, moving on. We're going to drop a line now straight down to about here. Okay, watch. I'm going to come down, stop right about there. Okay. And I'm going to interrupt that line with another line like this. See that? Just one little line like that. Now, I'm going to do several more of those. Watch carefully. Here we go. We've got one. Now here come four more. Same angle, same length. One, a two, a three and a four. Now, look here, see how this one's a little longer than those? Never you mind, it's not going to ruin anything. And then we're going to connect all of these with a little curve, watch. Curve, what kind of curve is that gang? C curve, we've said that before in this show, it's a C curve. Now we're just gonna do this. We're gonna pretend this line passed right through, okay? And by now, some of you might be catching on to what it is that we are drawing. I bet those clever people out there, including the person who is named Clever, who is actually in the chat, is figuring this out as we go. So what do you think we're going to do on this side? You guessed it, a little mirroring action. We're going to mirror this over here. So let's drop it on down, Doo -doo -doo -doo, right about there. And we're going to interrupt that with a line. And then we'll do four more, one and a two and a three and a four and then reverse C curve right there and finish that out like so. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hi, Merrick. Nice to see you. Jess, thanks for joining us. Isis, nice to see you as well. Thanks for hanging out with us. And Lana, Lana, bing, bing, bing. Looks like you have guessed it. Well done. You get a power up. Okay, now. We are going to continue with a nice curvilinear line up here at the top. Watch how this goes. It's kind of an S curve. Now I'm going to start here and I'm going to curve up this way and then curve down to the middle. Watch. Curve and then curve. See that? Lovely. Now the same on the other side. Mirror that. Curve down and then up and then in. Okay. Delightful. All right, how are we all doing out there? Clever says, the old sea captain's seafood restaurant menu. Who is the old sea captain? I have no idea what you're talking about. That's very confusing to me. Who's the old sea captain? I have no idea. Okie dokie. Now, what do we do next? Here is where the drawing is going to become your own, but we're going to do one thing together first, okay? And that is this. We're going to draw right here above above this line. We're going to come up to about here. We're going to draw a nice little upside down C like that. And right above that, we're just going to put a little line like this. And off to the side here, I'm going to put a dot. See how it's the same height as the top of that line? And off to the side here, another little dot. And now is where you can customize this drawing. Now I like to do this, watch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a line coming up from here, and coming up from here, a little bit of a curve to each of those, right? And then I'm going to draw an ear that stops right there, watch. I'm gonna go like this and just stop it. And this one, and I just kind of stop it, leave it hanging there like that. And here's a really fun thing to do. Watch how I draw these squiggles. I'm gonna start here and look, I'm just gonna squiggle, see that? I change the direction of the squiggles all over the place. It's a whole bunch of S's in different directions and back and forth. And what I do is I just take that and I make hair out of it. Watch. Squiggly, wiggly, wiggly. Squiggly, wiggly, wiggly. Look at that. So fun. All these little squiggly shapes. And eventually I make my way down 
the one ear, and I come over here, and I just kind of squiggle my way down to the other ear. And there is a nice curly head of hair. And that is fun for me. So you can do whatever kind of hair you like on this person, right? And then you can decide, well, what kind of book are they reading, right? And you can decide to make any kind of a cover, whatever you want to put on the back. It could be maybe your favorite book. Maybe it's a book you really love. Um, so for mine, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this a book about, I'm just going to go one and two. It's a book about dogs. Right? Because that's fun. And then I just do lines back here, like saying that this is going to be the text describing what the book is. Notice how I draw those lines at the same angle as the book cover, that back cover. That's how we know that this text is all there. Righty. Okay, and maybe there's some little information down there. And there is my person reading a book. All right, now, if you want to do this, here is an option for you. All right, let's say you want to, you can stop right here, that's fine. But another thing you can do is leave a little space here and draw a line right down the middle like this, okay? And then just square it off with a little line like that. And then you can come in and out like that, and you can come in this way, and out like that. And you can decide that you've got this person reading here and standing up, right? That's another idea. But you can do that if you want, you don't have to. You can make this your own, and the person could be sitting in a chair. Maybe it's up to you, right? Do it the way you want to do it. Let's take our person and uh, let's slide them on over this way, okay? There we go, slide that person over there. Because now it is time for me to talk about favorite books. So today I have a lovely one for you. And here it is. Let me just take this over here and make sure you can see this on the camera. Mmm, The Lost House. The Lost House is a delightful book by the very talented artist and uh, author B. B. Cronin, also known as Brian Cronin, has had a long storied career as an illustrator, about 30 years running, uh, and only got into making his own picture books recently with this series of lost books. Now, what exactly is this? Well, I'm going to show you. This is a absolutely gorgeous illustrated seek and find book okay what is a seek and find book well what it means is here we go i'm going to make this so you can see it better here we go every single spread if you look at this green one has something for you to find in it and the thing that you have to find is also green and so you are doing a sort of seek and find throughout the entire book until you find all the objects that Grandpa, here in the book, you're helping Grandpa find these objects, needs to find. Now, I just want to show you how beautiful some of these illustrations are because they're just stunning. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. You can see how rich these are in detail. The details are incredible. And it took my kids and I about a week to find all the objects we needed to find on these pages. And we were so enamored by the way these were illustrated and just the whole idea behind the book that we, for Christmas this year, uh, got the second and third books in the series. And I believe there are a total of four of them, actually. But anyway, look at these cool illustrations. And this just shows you what's possible if you want to draw monochromatically. So you, this means monochromatic drawings are drawings done in a single color, right? With a single color being used, but with different values of the color being used. And when I say values, I mean darks and lights. And in some instances, look at this one, beautiful. You're just using 
two colors. So here we have a pink and a very, very dull blue-green kind of a color. It's almost a grayish blue-green. Um, but really, really wonderful, beautiful details. So hope you all can see that. Anyway, this is one of my favorites off the shelf. I also want to mention it because he works in an interesting way, which is he works with poster paint and screen toning and pencils, working with a variety of media. And that is called mixed media. When you're mixing different media together to make an illustration, it's a really fun way to work. Now at home, if you just so happen to have some uh, poster paint or maybe some watercolors, um, any kind of paint that you can mix with water, you could try mixed media drawing by using pencil along with your watercolor or using colored pencil over your watercolor or what's really nice is crayon over watercolor as well. You can also use crayon first and when you put the watercolor over it, there will be what's called a wax resist process where wherever you put the watercolor on top of the crayon, the crayon will push away that watercolor. Okay, it'll kind of leave that area untouched. Anyway, lots of fun that you can have with that. So that is the B.B. Cronin, Brian Cronin, The Lost House. And here's a nice picture of the cover for you. I highly recommend checking it out if you are interested in such things. It's a beautiful art book. Um, even if you didn't have to go finding anything in there, which is really fun, just to admire the drawings. It's uh, a really special, special publication. I love it. Oh, my goodness, it's so beautiful. Publication is the wrong word. It's a published book. Um, really, really lovely stuff. All right, and from time to time, I'll take a book off that shelf and I will show you it and uh, we can talk about it. If anybody in the chat actually has this book or seen it before, let me know because um, it's one that I don't think enough people have seen. Oh, Rob, you are way too kind. Uh, let's see, beautiful artwork. Yes, it's a fun book. Yes, 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 yes. Really, it's so, it's so lovely. Okie dokie, we are gonna move on now because it is time for the animal and activity game. And what is that? Well, if you've been hanging out with me before on this show, you know that the animal and activity game is where you suggest an animal doing something strange, unexpected, something funny, something weird, something we haven't seen before. And then I will attempt in the time we have remaining, which is about eight minutes, to draw it for you, okay? I will look in the chat for your suggestions. Remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, I can't see your suggestions. You have to come to Behance dot net slash live to join the chat. If you don't have a Behance account, don't worry, it's free. You just sign up and you are good to go. You can join in on these live shows and it's really fun. Um, especially for me because I get challenged to draw something strange every single week, two times a week. Really keeps my brain going, you know. Got to work out that noggin, got to work out that mind, don't you? Otherwise it just kind of turns into putty. Okie dokie, we have a bear catching a bus. I like that one, Steven. That's a good one. A lion pounding his chest. A T-Rex doing a cartwheel. Wouldn't that be hilarious on their tiny little arms? I think as soon as they got, they started the cartwheel, they would just collapse head first because those little arms could never hold up their weight. Sally says platypus, but doing what, Sally? By the way, platypus is an animal I really have to learn how to draw because uh, I don't know how to draw that one. I should really learn that. An elephant eating a bowl of pudding. Pudding, what a nice thing for an elephant to eat. I wonder if elephants like pudding. A panda bungee jumping. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. Laura, I like that one. Gang, I don't know, I don't know. Well, the bear catching the bus is funny. Panda bungee jumping. Tell you what. Uh, oh, clever, we did the chicken. We did the chicken lifting dumbbells. If you watch back, that was about three weeks ago. Um, another platypus one, my goodness, chatting with Bigfoot. Okay, all right, here's what we're gonna do. I am going to go for the panda bungee jumping. Why? I don't know because I don't think I've drawn a panda yet. It's, and I like the bear idea, Stephen, uh, but we've drawn quite a few regular old bears, so I think I'll hold on to that one. Maybe tomorrow we can do that. I think that's a funny one. I'd like to see that bear kind of running and trying to catch that bus. Maybe he's in a suit, like he's going to work, you know? So panda bungee jumping. Now I have to use a light color to draw this, right? So I always go for a nice light blue. 
And here we go. Are you ready? I'm gonna have this panda coming straight towards us, okay? And I think he's gonna be looking a little bit sort of shocked by what this little decision he's made to to bungee jump. Because honestly, that sounds pretty terrifying. Has anyone out there ever bungee jumped? Let me know in the chat if you've ever bungee jumped. I had the opportunity to do it my senior year of high school. It was part of a senior trip thing and uh, opted not to do it. That was not something I thought I would enjoy. I was too scared. Basically, that's what it comes down to. Too scared. Okay, there is our panda bear face coming right at us. And have those little panda bear ears kind of flying back that way. Do panda bears have fluffy ears? I can't remember what their ears look like. Are they kind of fluffy or are they more kind of like solid, easy to identify sort of a shape? I can't remember, somebody help me out. All right, now we're gonna have the extreme foreshortening going on here. So we've got arms coming right at us. I think it's cute to give them just three fingers, cartoon style, right? One and two. Make sure they're all the right kind of stubbiness here. And three. All right, and There's our little panda foot and another one back there. And there is that bungee cord, which is flying off into the distance there from wherever he's jumping. Okay, how's that? Maybe the eyes are like a little more sort of crossed like that. Okay, there we go. Alrighty, now let's go on to the line work. So we're going to just reduce the opacity of that sketch and grab my blue. And then here we go. Are you ready, gang? Let's see how fast I can knock this out. Whoa. There's one eye. Two eyes. Little panda nose there. This way. And all this should be, I think, colored in so we know what we're dealing with here. We gotta, pandas have those circles around their eyes, right? By the way, this is the thing about when you in invent, right, instead of using reference, you just have to kind of go off what you think you've seen 
and hope for the best, you know? And that's kind of part of the fun of it. Sometimes what you get is something, like people understand what they're looking at. They're like, oh yeah, I think that's a panda. And then if you go out and like look at a photograph of a panda, you find that, oh yeah, you messed up some certain things, the anatomy or whatever, like, but overall, um, you know, it reads. And that's what you're going for, right? I mean, come on, folks. Look at Pluto. Is Pluto... <laughs> Have you ever seen a dog that looks like that? Give me a break. But we know it's a dog, don't we? We also know that somehow Pluto is smaller than or about the same size as Mickey Mouse, I guess, is his owner. Which, he must be one enormous mouse, huh? Or maybe just a really tiny dog. Ever wonder about that kind of stuff? Is that what keeps you up at night? All right, we're gonna have the tie. There's like bungee cord there. Around those legs. A little panda foot back there. The other one back there. And then we'll do that cord. Coming up and back and then all the way back there and just get smaller. Put some clouds there. Just jumping from like an enormous suspension bridge 300 feet up in the air. What do you think about that? Hide the sketch and I think we're in pretty good shape. Well, there you go, gang. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'm going to see you again very soon. I hope you enjoyed this. It's time for me to say see you later. And so I will join you again very soon tomorrow, same time. See you then. Take care, everybody.